Hi, I'm John Hollis with AccuTab. We're here today with Ron Stewart, and um, Ron's going to take some time giving us an overview of some of the more influential fiddlers that uh, recorded with the Flat and Scruggs group. And I think there's a wealth of information for anybody who studies bluegrass fiddle, whether you uh, maybe were old enough to uh, hear that music when it was first recorded, or like us, had to, had to get it the second time around. It's a, just a great wealth of information, and certainly this music uh, informs everything that's been recorded since. So it's awfully valuable stuff. Yeah, definitely for any fiddle player. You need to know this stuff. So would the guys that recorded, say, in the late 40s and 50s, they probably would have listened to Arthur Smith and studied his style the same way you studied these mm -hmm. fellows' music. I'm, I'm sure. Uh, you know, Arthur was on the Grand Ole Opry uh, with the McGee brothers uh, in the late 30s, I believe it was, and through the 40s. Um, like I said, did a bunch of recordings. So I'm sure that these fiddlers were listening to Arthur. Um, you know, he was called the, the king of the country fiddlers. You said you could hear uh, Arthur's playing in the bluesy stuff mm -hmm. that uh, Jim played. Now, can you maybe tie those two together? Show yeah, I think it's pretty easy, uh, especially on Cabin and Caroline. Uh, Jim starts the, the break with a kind of a swell notes and then goes all into this slide stuff. So let me play just a, a second of that. Of course, that was a little different, the double stop thing, but you can hear all those slides in and out of the notes, uh, things like that Arthur was doing at the time. We'll do the first eight bars of You Don't Know My Mind, and there's something a little strange that happens in this, and I'm not sure if it was an actual mistake or on purpose, but whatever it is was great. Benny actually holds the four chord after it moves into the five chord. So let me play the first eight bars. Last double stop and the slide into it. I'm hitting an A note on the G string and a G note on the D string, and then I'm sliding back that D string into an F note. these fiddle players shaped me into the fiddle player that I am now, uh, along with, you know, other fiddlers, of course. But the Flat and Scruggs fiddlers were just, you know, what I heard out of the fiddle, what I wanted to, to make mine sound like. If did I you learn could. all these breaks when you were young? Yeah, I've, I spent days, weeks, months, years playing along with these records and, and learning these breaks. Uh, not just for the fact of learning the notes of the breaks, because um, a lot of these breaks they're not they're not difficult. It's the tone, it's the feel that they had, it's the phrasing that they used. Uh, that's the hard part. Uh, the notes are usually never the hard one, part. It's just two, getting one, the feel two, and the, three, the tone yeah. and the phrasing and that sort of thing, and figuring out why they were doing it when they did it, uh, or why they weren't doing something. Uh, more importantly. Thank you. 